Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Notice what this verse isn't saying. It doesn't say Jesus looked at the man and was filled with scorn. It doesn't say Jesus looked at the man and was disappointed. It doesn't say Jesus looked at the man with pity or disgust. It doesn't say Jesus looked at the man and gave up on him. It says Jesus looked at the man and loved him and loved him. Jesus peered into the soul of this rich young man, just as he peers into the soul of every human being, and he saw a man who was lost and in need. And he told the man how to find his way back, how to fill the need. He told the man what he had to let go of if he truly wanted to follow Jesus. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus knows our deepest desires, our deepest self. He is the one to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. He knows everything about us. He knows our joys and sorrows. He knows what moves us forward and what keeps us back. He knows what we need to hold on to and what we need to let go of. He knows the worst of us, but sees the best in us. Jesus meets us where we are. But he doesn't expect us to stay there. He invites us to follow him wherever he's going. But there are prerequisites. There are things we have to do if we're going to follow Jesus faithfully. And that's not not because Jesus likes to give us rules to follow. The prerequisites, letting go of the clutter that builds up in our minds and hearts, is simply best spiritual practices. Best practices. To the young man in today's gospel, it's giving away his money, his wealth, his possessions, Because Jesus knows that the man is too attached to them and that they'll keep him from following Jesus faithfully. At best, they're a distraction. At worst, they are a a replacement for God. They are idols that have captured his imagination. His wealth might very well be an object of worship, and Jesus says he has to let go of it. And he's not saying that to make the man feel bad. He's not chastising the man. He's not making a statement about the evils of wealth or an unjust economic system. He's throwing the man a lifeline. And Jesus is throwing the lifeline because he loves the man. He cares about the man's well-being. He wants only the best for this man who is lost and in need, just as Jesus loves us, cares for us and our well-being, and wants only the best for us. We're all lost in some way, and we're all in need. Some of us are even broken. Some of us are living in fear. Jesus wants to heal all of that. We are, all of us, distracted from knowing Jesus, knowing God and God's love for us. And there are so many things on which we waste our love. Why not give our love to God? Why not give it to Jesus? After all, only Jesus can love us back. Most of the time, Jesus loves us first. Jesus loves us way before we love him. So what is it then that you're holding on to 
that prevents you from embracing the reality of God's love, God's grace and favor? What is it that, what is it that keeps you, keeps Jesus at arm's length? Who or what are you following that forces Jesus to the sidelines? What is Jesus telling you to go and sell, get rid of? Maybe, like the man in the story this morning, it is the pursuit of wealth. Maybe it's simply an uneasiness with mystery or spirituality. Maybe it's an ideology or or a pattern of behavior. Maybe it's a feeling of unworthiness, a feeling that you're incapable of being loved or loving. It might be the pursuit of knowledge or power or prestige. Whatever it is, Jesus is saying you can walk away from it. You can give it up. That's the promise of today's gospel, that we can put whatever it is that keeps us from knowing Jesus, that keeps us from embracing the divine, we can put it away. We can leave it. In fact, we have to leave it. We have to put it away in order to follow Jesus faithfully. So I want you to think about that. What is it? What is it that keeps you from knowing Jesus fully? And I I want you to give it to God. Lay it at the altar and walk away. Change your life by making room for Jesus. But don't don't make the mistake that it's a one and done type of thing. We need to put it away every day because it keeps coming back. That clutter keeps coming back. We need to choose to follow Jesus every day. We need to cultivate a habit of giving up and then giving in to Jesus through prayer and worship and contemplation. We need to refocus our energy and our attention. We need to refocus our worship and make Jesus the center of our lives. But whatever you do, Don't do what the man did. Don't do what the man did. When he heard this, the man was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. The man walked away because he couldn't bring himself to let go of his possessions. He wouldn't sell them because he was too attached to them. He chose his possessions over Jesus. No wonder he was sad. No wonder he grieved. Because he pushed Jesus out of the way. He was that attached to his possessions. Now maybe the man continued to admire Jesus from afar, or tried to follow some of what Jesus taught, But he never gave Jesus his heart. He never gave Jesus his full attention. He never fully experienced God's love in his life. And that's the other part of the promise, that God will be with us and that Jesus does love us. Jesus wants only the best for us. He wants us to embrace our lives and his life fully. But we can only do that by following Jesus faithfully, following Jesus the way Jesus wants to be followed, by giving up whatever it is that's holding us back from embracing the one who embraces us. Amen.